when we left off, your beloved professor finally got this button working. <laughs> and it's funny because I, I used to, I would have always gone back and, and re-recorded that video, but I do leave them in sometimes because I think it's helpful to know that, man, I've been doing this for a while and you just have to remember. And it's not something I do frequently, so I kind of have it there in the back of my head, but I don't know it well. And uh, anyway, I'm glad we finally got it working. So uh, one of the things that we use a lot in um, JavaScript, so if I was to continue on here instead of just, um, you know, what I'm currently doing is just saying this worked. That obviously is not very helpful. If I did something like come in and say, yeah, let's go get the information there. Um, I'm going to go get the from. Now, eventually, we're gonna, you know, we could pass this to a database or... Um, actually send out an email. We can do lots of things with this. But if I just want to say, let's just print out what, what they actually typed in there. So I'm going to say from, and then concatenate to that, and say document.get element by ID, and say, well, now each of these things are going to need IDs. And so I'm going to say um, the, um, so text from, so I'm going to say uh, ID here equals text from, and the ID here is going to be equal to text subject. Sometimes if we put on this little three character abbreviation, it just helps us to know better what it is that it, you know, it's actually doing. So we, we have our own method of naming convention that allows it to be easier for us. And I'm gonna say this is text message. So the TXT tells me that it's a, a text that we're getting. Um, and so now those things each have IDs and, um, I think we're good there. And now, now I'm very gun shy in doing this. Okay. So get element by ID. And so I'll, I'll first print out what's in the text from, and then I'm going to get the value of that. And then I'm going to concatenate to that. Um, a comma and then subject equals and then I'm going to concatenate on that document dot get element by ID text subject and then to that I'll get the value that's in there and then I'll concatenate to that another comma and then have the actual message so again I'm just kind of setting this up that at some point I could do something with this information but um, that's not the purpose of what we're doing here. So I'm just going to do this much. Okay, so this is going to be our text message. Get it? Text message. Ha -ha. All right, so let's, I think we're good there. Save that. And now if I run this, then it's back to not working, which makes me super happy. Um, what did I do wrong now? Let's see. So alert. Oh, I got a lot of JavaScript with its unhelpful errors because um, it's all done at runtime. Okay, so I closed my parentheses of the um, alert, and now I think we're good. Okay, let's try that. All right, that looks much better. Okay, so now if I put something in there, hello, blah, yada, then it's gonna print those things out for me. All right, so that's great. But when we're writing JavaScript, there's a tool that'll, that helps us as we're writing this JavaScript and gives us some shortcuts. And it does things like, if I wanna fade out a picture, that would be a lot of work for me to write that JavaScript. And so there's a library of JavaScript commands called jQuery. And this is something that's super useful as we write JavaScript um, and is, is used a lot of times. And so I need to get that into my libraries folder, just like I have Bootstrap. I want to get jQuery in there. Now, before I told you that... Um, you can get Bootstrap in in a different way. We could go out to jQuery site, we could download the files, we can do that exactly exactly like we did with the, um, the Bootstrap. 
But there's another way to do it. There's actually two ways to do it. So the one way that's not preferred by Microsoft is to use the NuGet Package Manager. And so if I go to Tools and the NuGet Package Manager, I can come in here, search packages by solutions, and I go out here and um, I can browse and say, well, I want to get jQuery. Um, and it will go pull up the information and I can click on this and uh, choose what I want it to be installed to and then install it. I could do the same thing with Bootstrap. It'll go search for that and I could click on this and say install Bootstrap and it'll bring it into my project. But the preferred way that Microsoft likes us to do it, and I think works pretty well, if I click on Tools and then I go to, um, no, it's not under Tools, right click on the project and then say Manage Client Side Libraries. So Project Manage Client Side Libraries, I'm gonna click on that. That was not what I wanted at all. Actually, you can do it that way, but that's not the easiest way. I think we say add, actually. Add. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm recording these videos at night, and I know I should never do that. I'm, you know, It's better to do it when you're fresh in the morning. So add a client-side library. This is the one I was looking for. So right-click on the project, go to add, and then client-side library. And now the library, we can search and say, well, I want to get jQuery. And so I can click on that and it says, is this what you want? Are these the files? And I say, yes, actually I do. And it's gonna put them in the library jQuery folder and install those. And sure enough, the files come in and there's jQuery. I can now use it in my uh, file. Well, what does jQuery allow us to do? It gives us a bunch of little shortcuts. So for example, when I'm writing this out, it drives me nuts because I have to type in get element by ID over and over and over again. In jQuery, the get element by ID is replaced by a dollar sign. And then we just put a pound sign, that's why I did that before, to, when we want to get a specific ID. And so here, we would do a dollar sign, and then a pound sign. And you can already see how it shortens up the code to do this. Um, so dollar sign, and then pound sign there, and then dollar sign here, and pound sign there. Um, and that's just one of the things, you know, there's lots of things it does to kind of shorten up the code and, and you write it differently. But then you can do other things, like when I do this alert, what if I want to have the picture that I had on there fade out? Well, if I go in and um, to the picture, to the image itself in the HTML file, and on that image tag, I give it, where did the image tag go? Image right here. Let's say I give it a ID of um, image Ganderson. Then in my jQuery file, uh, sorry, my, my JS file, I can say go out, so dollar sign, and then uh, pound image, uh, in quotes though, pound image Anderson. And then I can call a command like fade out. And then I can give it a different way of fading out. I can do it slow so we can actually see it work. Um, and this is a routine that's inside this jQuery library with all these different JavaScript commands. Again, somebody's built this for it. We get to benefit from it. I'll save all. I'll run this and I'll pray. <laughs> all right, so we run this. Then, okay, sure enough, it's not working. Um, which is, it always seems to happen when I'm doing JavaScript because I, I'm so used to doing jQuery. And then I go back to JavaScript. It, it never works. <laughs> because I'm writing half JavaScript and half jQuery commands. But looking at the clock, uh, we are just out of time. So I'm gonna go figure this out, leave you on a cliffhanger, and come back in the next episode ready to finish this up and uh, tell you what happened and why it wasn't working the way it was supposed to. Spencer, out. <laughs>